Hi, and welcome back to another series of how to hack. So today we're going to discuss about the denial of service attack. We're going to use some tools like LOIC and Wireshark to help us understand about TCP and UDP protocols on the network traffic layer. And we're going to demonstrate how we can actually take down a web server using UDP or TCP. And we have LOIC, which is a low orbit ion cannon. And what it does, it actually sends a lot of traffic into the web server, consumes the computing resources, and from there, it actually disable the web server from providing any legitimate or authentic protocol or responses to legitimate users. So what's going to happen is that you can see from the Wireshark on the network traffic how we actually flood the entire web server with, with a lot of illegitimate requests and forcing the web server to actually use up a lot of computing resources. And of course, at the end of this video, we're going to discuss about some of the defenses that we can actually provide to be able to defend, to be able to block, to filter, and to restrict many of these attacks. So most importantly, today, we're going to use some tools where some of the hackers have been have been sentenced to computer crimes. So it's really important for you to set this, this environment that is only to be within your own local network or that you already have great permission from your enterprise from the contractual agreement to actually conduct a stress testing on your network. So over here we got two virtual machines running and on the foreground we have Metasploitable 2 so this is going to be the machine that is going to be attacked by the LLIC so if I enter ifconfig I can see the IP address is 192, so on the background, I have Ubuntu running. So Ubuntu is going to help us surf the attack using LLIC, and we will be able to turn our attacks. And at the same time, we're going to use Wireshark as a network protocol analyzer to really study about how the the whole idea of connecting between the transport layer and to understand how this denial of service actually work. So what's going to happen over here is I'm going to enter sudo wireshark so this will help launch wireshark in my ubuntu virtual machine so enter sudo so of course it's asking for your password so you just enter the password that is required for you to authenticate and to use the super user so now i have wireshark running of course it's already running and i can see that i have a a few network interfaces that i can use so of course i'm going to use the first one which is emp 0s3 so you double click on it and it's going to open up the the network protocol analyzer that's gonna check against this network interface. So of course over here I can see this is actually one of my phones that is running on the on the network that's trying to ask for where is who is 192.168.1.254. So of course going back to the terminal, going back to the terminal over here, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna launch the LOIC. So low orbit ion cannon is gonna help us do some conduct some denial of service attacks by flooding it with a lot of network traffic. So all you gotta do is enter mono. So I gotta go to download first. So I have already downloaded LOIC.exe. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna launch it. So you can enter mono and then followed by LOIC.exe. So this would actually launch LOIC. So over here we have low orbit ion cannon. So what's going to happen is that you're going to enter the IT IP address first. So remember the IP address is 182.168.1.19. And of course over here on the number three on the attack options. So we're going to use port 80 and do you want to use transport control protocol or do you want to use user data grant protocol. So we're going to use UDP. And of course, we're not going to wait for reply. And with this, we have 10 threads. So what's going to happen is that we're going to send a lot of network traffic requests to the web server. And the whole point of denial of service is to flood it with so much requests that he has no time to actually respond to legitimate or authentic requests coming into the server. So when I go back to Firefox and I enter 192.168.1.19, I'm actually able to access the services on the web server. So I can go to MultiLade, I can go to PHP My Admin. I'm able to access the site as intended. However, the point of the intrusion is actually for us to be able to 
attack the system so that we may be able to override with so much requirements of resources, of computing resources, that a server can no longer respond to any other authentic requests. So going back to low orbit ion cannon. So what we're going to do is we have 10 threads over here and we're going to send UDP requests. And all you got to do is click on the I'm a charging my laser. So you just click, click on it and oh, you got to lock in the, the attack first. 192.168.1.19 and click on the launch attack. So it's going to start flooding. You see, there's a lot of requested being sent over. So I can click stop flooding. So the idea is that imagine you have multiple computers, you can launch multiple threads, maybe even 20 threads. You have a lot of processing power. You can keep sending this information over using multiple computers into the web server. And over here, if you look at Wireshark, you can see that we have the payload over here. So a cat is fine too, etc. So all these are the information that is being sent over to the victim machine so we can overload the machine so much so until it's no longer able to respond to legitimate sites. So the whole goal is to keep sending plenty of this information over and to be able to flood it with so much request that it can no longer function properly. So this is how denial of service attack actually work using LOIC. So additionally, you can increase the number of threads. You can change the transport layer protocol to TCP. So it's going to be having different results as a TCP requires three-way handshake to complete the connection. And of course, UDP is a fire, fire way and to be able to flood the, the information onto the web server. So all these are, are techniques that you can actually use on low orbit ion cannon you can download it from this site and you'll be able to launch it on windows machine so over here i'm actually using mono to run it as an exe file and of course you can change the the attack to tcp so if we were to look over here uh, on the latest latest network traffic we can change it to tcp as well and of course we can launch the attack or we can change it to http and of course same thing we can launch the attack as well so if you see over here I'm going to click stop flooding. So what you're going to see is that we have sent a lot of information over to the, the IP address. And what's happening is that you can see the source as 192.168.1.13 to the destination of 192.168.1.19. And what's happening over here is that you see a return address or return information from the web server to you. So it actually consumes computing resources from the web server. So if you have multiple attacks of this, it's going to take up a lot of computing resources from the web server. And what's going to happen is going to delay the responses to legitimate and authentic requests coming from users. So you as a, as a hacker, the whole idea is what can I do to, to increase the number of requests and if you are a web developer or a web administrator, then the question is, is there anything you can do to filter off all these attacks that are illegitimate, that are malicious in nature? What can I do to filter them away? So you've seen how easy it was in the demonstration to actually provide or flood using the LOIC tool and to inspect the network traffic coming from LOIC to the web server. And from there, you understand exactly how we can actually flood the web server with a lot of illegitimate requests, malicious requests, and overwhelm the web server from responding to legitimate requests. So the, the idea is pretty simple. And the greater part is that if you were to perform a distributed denial of service attack, you could install multiple LOIC and tens of thousands, even hundreds of thousands of devices, and you could push the UDP, TCP, or even HTTP flooding over into the web server. And that would actually take down a lot of massive servers around the world. So I think some of the hacking incidents that happened in 2016, there was a, there were huge distributed denial of service attacks coming from Internet of Things devices. And what happened was that it shut down the entire servers, domain servers from actually being able to respond properly to those requests. So moving forward, the question will be, how can we defend against such a denial of service attacks? So one of the very, really easy way is to use web application firewall or to have simple firewall configurations like filtering of certain IP addresses, blacklisted IP addresses, or to filter against a massive sending of, of network traffic from a particular source. So if a source was to send like 10 
uh, 10 times the amount of UDP packets or TCP packets per second, then chances are it could be a a malicious activity coming to attack your web server. And all you got to do is just discard that packet, look through the packet using a firewall, discard it, and you'll be able to respond properly to legitimate requests. So that can be one way of defending your web servers. And of course, in conjunction with web application firewall or firewall, you can actually use distributed network or, or load balancers to be able to distribute the request coming from different kind of sites. So after perhaps your firewall has filtered the request, you have multi, multiple servers around the world, you have different data centers around the sites, and you'll be able to distribute the the content or the flooding of attack coming in from one server to others, and you'll be able to distribute the resources, the computing resources, and be able to alert the administrators on some of the malicious activities. And if there's a spike in the network traffic, you'll be able to take it down, blacklist the IP address again, or to disable certain traffic from coming into your systems. And of course, that is all I have for you today in today's presentation. So if you really enjoy what you have just watched, feel free to subscribe.